so the Rocky Horror Picture Show is to be speaking with you. Well, thank you. No, honored to be speaking with you. I can't wait to go uh, to the theater tonight and uh, start a huge party in Philadelphia for our 49th anniversary. So how does it feel that Rocky Horror is celebrating 49 years? Well, <clears throat> we made it in, what, 75? And honestly, I didn't think I'd ever make it out of the 70s, uh, uh, like so many of us in the 70s. Uh, it is an honor. You know, it is it is a... It's, it is a blessing in my life because I've been with Rocky Horror all these years. I've loved it. I passed, you know, it's more than just a move me, a movie. I think it's actually a movement in a way, you know, towards uh, uh, understanding, embracing our differences and perhaps, um, uh, you know, thinking about who our authentic selves are. And I think we just show them in a very humorous way. Maybe there are other choices in life. Definitely. And I think now, especially with like the election season and coming up and everything, Rocky Horror is just the perfect, just it encompasses everything that the world doesn't right now. So yeah. why do you think Rocky Horror is still such an important tradition all these years later for many people? I think it's just a big, I think it's just, <clears throat> it's fun. And it, and it's on our, we're on our third generation now of fans and I think the, the weirdness has crawled up the family tree. Um, uh, and uh, I'm always amazed that three generations of people like the same thing. You know, it, it, you, you, you couldn't get them all to like the same music or the, you know, same pop cultural kinds of uh, things. But for some reason, Rocky Horror Picture Show just hits hits all the you know checks all the boxes it's it's sexy it's rude it's a uh, um uh you know you you go there and you find your community in a way and um you can share it with your friends and you can also sneak out of the house at age of 12 and um uh it'd be naughty because it's a naughty but nice movie yes definitely so Brad was such an iconic role in your career. Did your life change at all after the movie came out? Uh, well, no. I mean, I think it, it, my life has changed because after all these years, I am associated with uh, this nerdy guy. And, you know, a lot of people think that I was responsible or my character was responsible for making nerds cool. Uh, <clears throat> but... Uh, uh, yeah, no, you know what? I, I just, I am always amazed, <clears throat> speaking of Philadelphia, that I was asked to play George Washington in this large, long miniseries in the 80s. Um, I guess that the producers and directors hadn't seen me in my high heels and bustier, you know, a few years earlier, uh, or they probably would have cast Tom Selleck. <laughs> um, was there ever a moment that you can remember where you realized this movie would live on as a cult classic? When you were just like, wow, this movie is so much more than just a movie. This is going to be going on for 49 years and so many more after. No, not really. Well, when I first saw it uh, downtown at the 8th Street Playhouse uh, in New York, um, and uh, Sal Piro, who was sort of started this whole engine going, he stood up in an audience and tried to calm people down because the, because the, the owner of the theater didn't want flames or too much water and all these things that people were bringing into the theater to, um, you know, engage with the movie. And Sal stood up and he, he, he got people involved and he, people that he got people to stand up in costume because people were just in costumes. He got them to enc encourage them to, to speak out and to make some uh, witty political or uh, humorous uh, call out. And, and he eventually, um, uh, was really the organizer of all the fan clubs and the, the wrote books uh, on on the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, so I always think that Sal Piero is our is our godfather, and he started it, and um, he passed the torch to uh, 
Larry Vizel, who's out on tour with me, who's now head of the fan club worldwide and handles all of the, the media, and he and I opened the show um, with a costume contest and with uh, uh, virgin ceremonies and a lot of fun. And uh, before that, I do a meet and greet with anybody who wants to come and meet and greet. Down, they get tickets for three rows as part of that. And then I come out and I talk to the audience for a little while. And then we start the movie with a great shadow cast. And uh, the evening goes on and, and basically the fans take over. And they become the party. They become the film. They become the entertainment. It's just a big happening. I mean, the Rocky Horror Picture Show Shadowcast is unlike anything else. I mean, there's no other movie that this this uh, cult classic tour experience happens with. Um, has there been a favorite moment of the tour so far? Um, my favorite moment of the tour is probably when I don't have to wake up at 530 in the morning <laughs> and get on another plane. Uh, because uh, we basically do it one night, uh, pack when we get back to the room, wake up early, go to the next city, do the show that night, pack, <clears throat> and then the next day we're doing, uh, I'm doing 26 cities in a row. I know pa Pat uh, Pat Quinn is also doing some tour, tour dates, and Little Nell are doing some tour dates. So we're covering the country and covering uh, Canada up and up until uh, Halloween and and then a few days after. So I think I do Georgia a few days after that. And um, it makes my October, I get to finally see some color in the trees because I live in Florida and everything's green all the time. Um, is there anything you're most looking forward to, um, to being in Philadelphia? Oh, in Philadelphia. Well, it's my old stomping ground as, uh, as George Washington. So I'll probably visit... <laughs> some of the places that we actually shot the movie uh, when we were there. And, um, uh, oh, and I get to get some sleep before <laughs> I do the show. I get, I have half the day off because we fly in on the evening before. So, no, I, the Philadelphia, is, it's a great audience. They're very enthusiastic, and I think they know how to have a good time. Definitely. I, I can't speak for all Philadelphians, but we're a rowdy bunch and we we, we know how to have fun. Um, yeah. How does it feel to be alongside Nell Campbell and Patricia Quinn again? I mean, you had a reunion. Like, how does that feel to be together again 49 years later? Well, it's interesting. We didn't really get to know each other when we were making the movie. We shot the movie in five weeks. We didn't really get to socialize at all. The minute Susan and I and Meatloaf got off the plane, we went right into pre-record and rehearsals and then just started making the movie. And it's a low budget movie, so there wasn't a lot of time to mess around. You know, we had to we had to knuckle down. And by the time we got out of makeup, which was always an hour later or something. And uh, um, so it's I've caught up with them 20, 30 years later as we occasionally see each other at a convention or and even with Tim Curry. Uh, um, we were friends at the time, and I was friends with these people, but many of them thought that I was uh, Brad Majors. Uh, mm -hmm. I was that sort of straight uh, American uh, young guy, you know, who was uh, um, uh, not uh, not not approachable, you know, on their level of of coolness. And next year, Rocky Horror Picture Show is celebrating the Big Five O. Is there anything you could tell us about what's next for the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Is there another tour planned? Anything? I I don't know. I you know Disney owns uh, owns Rocky Horror Picture Show now, and I'm not quite sure they know what to do with it. Um, the um, uh, I've I've heard rumors of, um, of big shows on the West Coast. I've heard, uh, and that's about it. I, it the producer Scott Stander of this tour is going to tour us all again next year and probably get Nell, Pat and I on the same stage at the same time, which would be exciting. Um, uh, Hollywood bowl is on, is a, perhaps on the list of where we would celebrate on the, on the left-hand side of the country. It, um, uh, because Tim Curry is on the West coast and he doesn't travel much these years because he's been so ill uh, and he's uh, uh, so if anywhere we can do it where we can get Tim there would be fabulous, not only for us, but also, I think, for the fans.
Yes, definitely. Well, congratulations on 49 years. I wish you 49 years, more years of the show and everything else in the tour. Um, and it was an honor speaking with you today. Well, thanks so much. Well, you know, it's up to the fans to keep this light lit for another 49 years. It's, uh, it's needed. It's, it's an imperative. All right. 49 years. Don't dream it. Be it. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.